Alhamdulillah these are the nights of and the night of immense forgiveness in which Allah forgive the servant whom is asking and by means of fasting immense lights to be dressed upon a servant in which they can't achieve through their amal but only Allah can grant through the secret of Siyam in which the reward comes directly from Allah And the way that awliyaullah have given for us du'as in which to understand the way in which to approach the du'as on the app from their teachings, from their understandings and that when we make the du'as say the istighfar then has an immense secret, immense blessing, immense lights upon it and that all our intentions are from the intentions, Ya Rabbi that I don't know and I'm asking from the intention of my shaykhs and their understanding, their intention and I'm merely copying that way and the way of Sayyidina Muhammad as to not limit that secret that coming to us and dressing us inshaAllah. We pray that Allah grant to us. Do you have the Sayyidina Al-Istighfar Shahzad, Tawbata Abdin Zalimin? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Tawbata Abdin Zaliman li nafsihi la yamluku li nafsihi mawtan wa la hayatan wa la nashura. Allahumma rabbi la ilaha illa anta khalaqtani wa la ana abduka wa la ana ahdika wa wa'dika. Mastalatu auzikum auzikum auzbika min sharri mastaazika. I thought it was longer. Oh, this is Mati's version. Min kulli zambi wa mahasiyatun. Johnny Felisa. Amin. It's longer. See. La ilaha illa anta khalaqtani wa amtuka wa la ala ahdika wa mastanta Ishan mastahadka Ubu bi zambi faghfir li ya maghfiru zunuba illa anta ya Allah Rabbana tuzi qulubana ba'da iz hadaytana wa habna la min ladunka rahma Innaka anta al-wahhab Ya wahhab, ya wahhab, ya wahhab Ya musabib al-asbab, ya mufatih al-abwab Ya muqallib al-qulubi wal-absar Ya Dalil al-Mutahayyireen, Ya Ghiyas al-Mustaghithin, Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum, Ya Zal Jalali wal Ikram, Wa Ufawwidu Amri ila Allah, Inna Allah Basirun bil-Hibad. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Alif Lam Mim, Allahu La Ilahu Al Hayyu Al Qayyum, Wa Atubu Alaik, Inna Huwa Tawab Al Rahim, means Alhamdulillah that Allah Azzawajal give from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad a means in which these ashiqeen to praise and pray and make their istighfar with all of its immense realities. Alif la mim, Allahu la ilaha illahu that the immensity of just this ayatul kareem and what it opens from the realities of Holy Qur'an and that that dress when they're asking for istighfar they're asking by this izzah and this might of Holy Qur'an that can be understood in alif la mim Allahu la ilaha illahu al hayyu al qayyum means that from the secret of alif la mim that izzatullah wanted to be known and through a divine tongue that was created came Muhammadun Rasulullah that lisan al-haq from Izzatullah to lisan al-haq to the Muhammadan haqqaiq that this secret was going to be known and that Allahu la ilaha illahu al-hayyu al-qayyum that as soon as they're reciting al-hayyu al-qayyum this is a code for the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Allah is neither high and qayyum, these are attributes of creation. Anything with high has might, anything with life has death. Allah is outside of anything from us understanding life and death. 
the Hayyu al Qayyum is a code in which to reach to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and that asking for the intercession of Prophet Tubu alayhi inna huwa tawab ar raheem that Prophet take our case and intercede for us to take away the badness, the bad character and that only the intercession of Sayyidina Muhammad can diminish everything. This is a gift that Allah has already given. So the way in which they approach, the words in which they use is the eloquence of their ishq and their love. Means by following guidance and guides we see what they recite, we read what they recite and in our lives we copy exactly that. And if you clever enough to copy that then alhamdulillah your heart one day will be inspired from what they're reaching and what they've been dressed, ones whom copy them will be dressed and will receive from their intention. Mm. And this is all from that hadith Prophet we said, each hadith of Prophet is immense ocean. You will be with whom you love in every deed and every action. That we're here under the love of Prophet love of Allah that guided us to the turuqs, to the path of ishq, that made the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And this love of Prophet guided us to his ashiqeen, that, you love me, I want you to be with my real and true lovers. And these are the turuqs, the path of ishq and muhabbat and they're the ashiqeen, the lovers and they, they are surrounded by ahbab those whom they have an immense love for Prophet As a result that hadith says, you'll be with them in every action and every deed. If you recite from what they recite, you will be with them, your intention will be under them. And this then becomes an immense, immense cycle of power that instead of an individual trying to find their Islam or their way or their spiritual path by themselves hoping one day it'll be right, next day it's wrong, uh, next day it's right. Allah guide them, why do you have to reinvent everything? I'm going to send you to those whom are sincere and whom I found satisfaction in them, copy them. وَقُلُوا مَا صَادِقِينَ Have a taqwa, have consciousness. Conscious means you have a, a sense of awareness, I can't do this on my own Ya Rabbi, it's going to take me many lifetimes. Then Allah wa kullu ma sadaqeen. Keep in your life, your physical and spiritual life, keep always in their company because Allah doesn't care for the physical. Allah's concern is for that which is eternal, the soul. So then Ayatul Kareem is in reference always to malakut first. Why Allah cares about your body, it's temporary and it's finishing. But if you understood through your soul that I must always keep their company, means I must always keep the visual of them, the nazar of them, the hudur, the presence of them always with my soul, I must always be in their company, they must always be with me. This is what Allah cares about for the inside controls the outside, not the outside control the inside. Inside power if achieved will control all the faculties of your outside. But outside can do nothing onto the inside because it's a completely different realm, it's an untouchable realm. So it means then the inside connection of, Ya Rabbi I make my tafakkur, my contemplation and I keep my presence always with my shaykhs, their eternal light that I always want to keep that company, then we're achieving Ayatul Kareem, kullu ma sadiqeen, that have your consciousness, keep their company. And every time you ponder, reflect and contemplate that company is a light of truth so that you don't deceive yourself and that shaitan doesn't deceive you. For anyone by themselves who's there with them is shaitan, making everything to seem fair and good to them. But when we learn to keep that company, that we're always in that company that becomes also a protection for us because that company, that light begins to tell us, watch out, that's, that's not right, 
what you're about to do is not correct, how you're about to say is not right. And that light of truth is what's important for us and dresses us and blesses us, inshaAllah. That light of truth is the kawthar that comes to that question, that why the kawthar? Why the month of pilgrimage is the kawthar? That Surat al-Kawthar is Surah 108 and this reality of nine and the sultanate of nine and that your hand is burned with a one and an eight, that Allah burned it on us, you are a nine. You serve the nine, you serve the king, you serve the sultan. So in the way of awliyaullah and spiritual realities, the nine is the sultan of all numbers, most powerful number. Anything that multiplied and add, added by nine is rendered back into nine and many other mathematical secrets because the numbers and the reality of numbers are an angelic knowledge. Kalam is of a dunya knowledge. The kalam and the words can have many points of errors. You spell something wrong it becomes something different, a completely different word. But can you spell eight wrong? Eight is eight, nine is nine, one is one, awwal is one. But if I spell awwal, maybe I put the wrong letters in it and it spells something else. So in Coding and programming, everyone knows that the letters could be very fallible and many, many errors. So when Allah want to give a knowledge of an angelic understanding, then it has to do with the numbers. From one hul awwal and nine hul akhir. And then from one to nine, most powerful numbers, everything else, double digit, renders itself to one of these single digit numbers, right? Thirteen, one, three, four comes to four. Twenty-five, two, five, seven comes down to seven. So the only numbers we're interested now is one through nine. So then this gives us an immense understanding of realities for those whom are interested in numbers and begin to meditate and study on that reality. So this way of awliyaullah is the way of understanding the sultanate of the heavens, the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and that that nine becomes their multiplier. So then they traverse and the guidance of Qur'an that comes to them is from the veil of nine. So Muharram, the ninth surah is their guidance because they already traversed Fatiha from one through nine. Now in their way of Marifa. The twelve veils that open to them are from level nine. So Surah Tawbah is in Muharram guiding them. And Tawbah means they enter the gate of Tawbah to make a true repentance. And Surah Tawbah has no Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, means that they're coming to sacrifice their bad character. Not Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Ya Rabbi forgive me, let me continue with my badness. Bismillah Allahu Akbar that I'm asking to be zabiyyad, that my bad character to be taken. I'm asking to enter into this bab and to this gate to reach your realities. And they traverse these hijabs to the twelfth month. Twelfth month is twelve times nine. And they land on Surat al-Kawthar, so it means you have to enter Tawbah. Go through these parder all the way to Surat al-Kawthar. And Surat al-Kawthar is the fountain of abundance in which Allah when He wants to grant the soul what He wants to grant, it has to be from the dress, the drink and the submerging into the reality of the kawthar. This is Prophet Wasallam's fountain. That we have given attain nakal kawthar fa salli li rabbika wanhar. We have given you the fountain of overwhelming abundance. There's nothing left out of it, there's nothing anywhere else. 
everything, every reality, everything is within that kawthar of Allah has given that fountain to Prophet Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem is feeding that reality. Its dress are oceans that enter into the pond, the pond of kawthar. So as a result, فَصَلِّ لِلْرَبِّكَ وَنْهَرْ Means that these servants who reach to this kawthar, because they're reaching to the heart and the reality of Prophet and that kawthar is flowing from the qalb of Sayyidina Muhammad right? Because manzil Qur'an, where's Qur'an coming? It's not just flowing in the air somewhere. The one whom eternally is revealing Holy Qur'an, because don't think in physicality that what we understand of qalb is nothing that can be understood. But if the whole of light is a creation, there's a centermost point of power and that power Qur'an is flowing from it. And that is the heart and the qalb of Sayyidina Muhammad in that world of life because it cannot be Allah. La ilaha illallah. Allah clarifies for us, no, no, no. Allah there's nothing but Allah, this is a creation. Allah is not within creation, Allah is the power of creation. Means then that flowing reality Allah gave to him that, I'm going to be, I made for you, I made your reality to reveal my secret. As a result this fountain of kawthar is flowing from your heart. When they reach to the kawthar Allah begin to describe their khuluq and character, فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ They pray unto their Rabb because they understood who knows himself will know his Rabb. They pray unto their Rabb and that they live a life of sacrifice because this is the Hajj. They sacrifice money, they sacrifice time, they sacrifice everything because that was the whole of Arafat. All the, the movement of Hajj was to get you to submit, to get you to the Jabba Rahmah and to make the sacrifice that don't think anything in your life is off the table with Allah Don't think you gave and now you achieve something. As soon as you gave Allah's asking now, give more. I'm coming after you for more of what you have. Means Allah is not saying it's ever over. Give, 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 do, do, do until your last breath. So they live a life of self-sacrifice. These are the kawthari individuals, their time is for Allah their life is for Allah to the best of their d d the ability that they have. Everyone has a, an ability and they can do or they cannot do. But this was the goal that, Ya Rabbi, that my life, my death for you, my service to you, these kawthari are an example of that. Their time for Allah their knowledge is whatever Allah has given to them for Allah and for Ummatul Muhammad فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَنْهَرْ And they live the life of service and sacrifice. And all the companions and Ahlul Bayt are an example of that. Who's the big sacrifice? Imam Hussain They didn't give money, they gave their lives. They gave their lives 72 and 1 into a field in which they gave themselves entirely for Allah and they lead by example. They lead that when you think your life is hard or you've done too much, look to the family of Prophet look to the holy companions and we haven't even touched the ground compared to what they've done. And that they motivate us, you can do more, you can keep going. If you're tired you can struggle through it. They're not kings like in dunya. Where they live such a portion and opulent life that they, that they can't relate to anything and how can you follow that example? But the immensity of their humility 
is that they're the immense kings of paradise and eternity and when they came to this earth they sacrificed their entire being in which their body, their blood, their, their sweat all upon a field for the sake of Allah Then we can motivate ourselves, Ya Rabbi I want to be from Kawthari people. I want to drink from the kawthar, I want to bathe from the kawthar, I want my soul entirely within that ocean, one har. Then Allah remind for us, then live a life and sacrifice. If you live a life of sacrificing and that's your time, your service, your ability, then you're drawing near onto that. In a shahni you call abtar. And as a result of this kawthar dressing you, Allah will cut your enemies from being near you. Means this understanding of this verse was, was uh, to honour Prophet And the enemies of Islam make a very bad interpretation. But what Allah is saying that this kawthar when it dresses you, those whom are coming after you will be completely cut. Because Allah is supporting you, means you may have many enemies but if you're kawthari Allah will fight you, Allah will fight for you. And that's why Allah says, don't ever fight against my awliya, I will declare war against you. You cannot pray, you cannot fast, you can do any kind of bad you want, Allah never says in Qur'an, I'm going to declare war against you. But if you come against this kawthari people. Allah immediately steps forward, says, I will declare war against you. What's the war of Allah like? Something unimaginable. There's not a moment in your safety if Allah has declared war against you. There's not a, 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 a drop of protection, there's not a moment of safety or tranquility. And you can do many wrongs and Allah never used that expression. That's the extent in which Allah al abtar that from my kawthari and those whom I'm dressing from this reality, everything is cut from, from reaching to them and I will avenge them, I will defend them. And that's the azimat of Allah that completely supporting that reality. So this is the immensity of this month. That as we're coming into this month, ending it, entering into the Eid, this is the month of kawthar. This is the month in which kawthar is dressing the souls of these whom wanhar, that they gave their qurban, they came with ishq and love and Allah's promise, I'm cutting your enemies, I'm cutting these things that making difficulty to you, I'm cutting shaitan from reaching to you and that in its, its gift is the kawthar to dress the soul, to bless the soul. So then that kawthar is at 108, right? For ilmu huruf ha from hayat is eight, qaf is hundred. So it means that it carries the secret of haq. It has a dress from the ocean in the reality of haq because these are Allah's haq. When Allah says, the truth has come and falsehood is perishing and falsehood is zahukan, is crumbling, has nothing. Why? Because this kawthar dress this light of haqq that dresses the servant because the, the haqqaiq is coming from all directions. Why 108? Because Allah made in the kalam a secret that that hai, that ha is an eight and has an immense reality of eternity. And the qaf of the Qur'an is coming and dressing that and making haqq. So haqq, haqq's elements are high and qaf, hay and qayyum and this has to do with the reality of light, the reality of the soul, all the immense dressings and blessings and with qaf and Qur'an and Majeed that this qayyum and this eternal power, this eternal reality 
and the truth of Allah is in the dress of 108 and haq and kawthar. We'll end here. Subhan rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamu ala mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.